All right, so we managed to get into um, the collision lab with Fit. I will let you guys know that I had to go out of Chrome and open Firefox um, and had something to do with the Adobe Flash on my computer. So definitely, if you're not getting it in one browser, try another browser. Um, and then I had to tell it that I trusted it to open my Adobe Flash. All kinds of weirdness. But when you get in, it should look like this. And there's an introduction and there's an advanced setting. Advanced setting is so that you can crash not head on. We're going to keep it simple. We're going to stay in this introduction. So no matter what I do, these guys will crash into each other. They're only on the X axis and there is no Y axis. What I am going to do, though, is come down here to the More Data button and click on that button. Um, and that way, I can determine how big of a mass I have and how big my second mass is. So this mass is three times bigger right now, mass number two than mass number one. And I can give them velocities. So you can tell by the arrow what direction they're going to go when you hit play. But the bigger the arrow, the faster the velocity. So if I change that one to two, it's going to move even faster. Now, I can grab a hold of a ball and I can move it out of the way so that I can see it better, so that I have more time. I can manipulate these velocities. I don't want ball two to have a velocity. So I'm going to set this up so that ball one runs into ball two like a fender bender. Over here in this little green box, that's where your elasticity is. And so right now I've got them set to completely bounce off each other. Um, remember, there's relatively few perfectly elastic collisions, but this is what's nice about a simulation. Now, I'm going to set my sim speed to slow down just a little bit, just to give me a little more time. Um, but it's going to simulate the same reaction no matter how fast I make it run. So here you go. I'm going to hit play. Now, ball two is running into ball one. Here it comes. And smash. And now you can see ball one rebounded and ball two is moving forward with a new velocity. And the size of the arrow has changed compared to the beginning. Now, position does not matter to us. It doesn't matter when we started and when we finished as far as position goes. We're not doing anything with that. But what we do have now is remember I had ball one set at two and I had ball two set at zero. And now here's their final velocities. Their velocities have changed. Um, you can record these momentums if you want to, but be careful because people tend to make some mistakes with them. Um, if I go back and I hit uh, restart or reset, here's my 0.5 with 2. It's going to have, you think, mass times velocity, a momentum of 1. My 1 and a half has no momentum. And I hit play, and here they come, and they're going to collide. Look how big that arrow is before the collision. And after, two shorter arrows. And if I hit pause, ball one is moving backwards now. So it has a negative velocity and a negative momentum. Ball two is moving forwards and it has a positive mass. Well, everything is a positive mass in what we're doing right now. But a positive velocity, which makes a positive momentum. Okay? So I'm going to reset this one one more time, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the elasticity down to half. So now some of the momentum is going to get used up in the collision. They're going to squish together a little bit. So you'll notice momentum here, same as before. I have the same pieces. I'm going to hit play. Here it comes. You can see the size of the arrow hasn't changed. And bam. Now, hopefully you'll notice this has changed quite a bit. There's a lot less momentum on that ball now. It has a much different velocity. But the total momentum overall is still one. What you'll find is when you go to calculate kinetic energies in your lab, that's where the difference will be. Kinetic energy will not be conserved as soon as you turn this elasticity down below 100. You're going to lose some. And it went into friction, usually heat, in the collision. All right. Then restart one more time. This is the last time I'm going to do this. I'm going to turn the elasticity all the way down. So now they're going to stick together. Ready? 
And here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. And you can see they are stuck together. They're traveling with the same arrow. Still, the total momentum is going to add up to one. Momentum stayed conserved. <clears throat> However, when you go to do the kinetic energy of this trial, you're going to find even more kinetic energy was lost. So that's what we're looking at on our lab worksheet is what, what happens when you change elasticity um, and also what happens when objects collide with objects that aren't moving. And then you're going to play around with this and you're going to make it so that both objects are moving towards each other. And you're going to run through the sim again at total elasticity, at 50% elasticity, and at no elasticity, and compare. And what we're trying to find out is when is momentum conserved and when is kinetic energy conserved. So in the other two data tables, you're just doing math. And the math that you're doing should lead you to be able to compare before and after kinetic energy and before and after momentum so that we can look at those rules. All right, so that's that. Remember that the button you want to hit to get started and have more pieces is this yellow button down here that says more data. And that'll give you more control over the pieces that you play with. All right, if you need anything else, make sure that you drop into a WebEx conference so that I can help you out.